time in this country, a long time ago, when reading wasn't just for fags, and neither was writing. People wrote books and movies, movies that had stories, so you cared whose ass it was and why it was farting, and I believe that time can come again. Welcome back to the Think Liberty Podcast. I'm your host, Caitlin, and I have no idea what episode number this is, but that's okay. We're just going to roll with it. Who cares what number it is? We're here to have a good time. And that's exactly what we're going to do this week as we're continuing with our special episode topic of conspiracy theories. First off, let's get everyone familiar with our co-host this week. Lonnie Dupree is joining us as always. Lonnie, how are you this fine Friday evening? Pretty good. Pretty good. Good, good. Yeah. Also on this episode, we have a TLP legend, Chris Oglesby, with us. Chris, it's been so long since you've been on. How have you been? Good, but I didn't realize in my absence I had made legend status. I should go away more often. You were part of TLP OG crew. <laughs> and the OG Liberty hosts After Dark. Are, are legends. Yeah. And Think Liberty After Dark, if our listeners even oh, remember man, that. Oh, man, it's been so <laughs> long since we did that. They don't yeah, remember so that. No one does. I'd like to start live streaming again. It would be cool to get that up and going. We definitely explored some conspiracy theories back then, too. So that this will did. be a fun episode. Yep. For, for our listeners not um, familiar with Think Liberty After Dark, it was a live stream we did about a year ago, um, every Friday or Saturday night, where we would all get really, really drunk and talk about <laughs> conspiracy theories and how the government was the devil. It was great. <laughs> We have a lot of exciting conspiracy theories to talk about and quite possibly make fun of. So getting right into it, let's talk about why conspiracy theories are so popular. Over 50% of Americans believe that the 9-11 official report isn't the whole story. We covered that on the last episode with Amos Joseph on Conspiracy Theories Episode 1. And it's estimated that up to 78% of Americans believe in some form of conspiracy theory or another, whether it be 9-11 aliens, alternate theories about JFK, or some lesser-known theory. As libertarians, it's not a shock to us that the government isn't to be trusted, but it is refreshing to see that so many people don't trust the government in one way or another. So why do you guys think that conspiracy theories are so popular? Well, I mean, for one, I mean, everyone loves a good mystery. I mean, you could just look at most of what's popular on Netflix right now you know, you got your various murder mysteries, you know, like making a murderer. You got your abducted a plane in plain sight. You know, all of these things that are just so crazy and outlandish. Making a murderer, it was Pe- great. <laughs> I didn't watch it. My wife did. But, but you know, people, people love those kind of things. You know, uh, America almost has this fascination with serial killers and, you know, things like that. Just this kind of just trying to figure out, like, all these intricate little details and – well, what really happened here? And, well, maybe this didn't actually happen. Or, the, oh, they never caught the guy. What if it was someone important, like a president? You know, it, it's just crazy kind of stuff. You know, like Jack the Ripper. People kind of think maybe it might have been members of the royal family. Someone Wait, there could have been Jack the Ripper. Yeah. I never heard that theory before. Oh, yeah, I've heard that. Like, it's it's pretty insane. I got, how, I got pretty into Jack the Ripper, goes. and I still never heard that one. That's crazy. Yeah, everyone, I think, even if they don't believe them, I think they like conspiracy theories. And even the people that make fun of people like Alex Jones and people who listen to Alex Jones, I think deep down they love a good mystery. So that I think that's why a lot of people like them. Even if they don't believe in them, they still like them. For me, it kind of goes back to the old – like kind of the old saying that like you know truth is stranger than fiction and sometimes you know truth like verified actual truth is stranger than a fiction that you could conjure up like for example you mentioned jfk the fact that jfk and hitler dated the same (coughs) woman in different time periods that's true it's actually true but the thing is oh yeah they're uh they're what do you call it eskimo brothers i guess is what you call it um but yeah 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 that's what it's called (laughs) (laughs) i forgot the i forgot what it was called after but that's actually true so the thing is from never mind i'm not asking that no 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 let's not go too deep i don't know what's going on right now (laughs) so and from that you can kind of 
from little things like that where you're just like, what? How? And then you look into it more and it's actually verified and people develop like different theories about other things. Like, well, you know, what if these other two famous people had it going on? They were in the same place and same time or it, it, it people conjure up like a lot of different stories about real life thinking they might be true. And I think it kind of goes back to what Lonnie's saying is that people create a fiction to fit real life because it's interesting. It adds flavor. And also it's just probably because like people are crazy or bored, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it can be any one, any, any number of things. And then also like, I feel like the potential for this has been expanded with science fiction. And we've seen how in a, a layman's minds, how fiction can have some science play into it. And then you wonder how much of, you know, science is fiction. <laughs> so right. it's no, I something think interesting. I think yeah. there's a lot to that. The whole era of science fiction really came into like into its own light within the last what 70 years or so. I think that's really lent a hand to the explosion of conspiracy theories, if you will. I think another oh, part sure. of it though that kind of wraps the whole thing up is the need to belong. Like the need to belong to a group of people. And I think that's a lot of the underlying part of conspiracy theories. It's you find other people who believe in it, or you convince people to believe in your theory, and you guys are a part of something new. And it gives you a feeling of purpose. And it gives you a feeling of intellectual high ground on other people that it's just kind of like a, a rush psychologically, you know? Yeah. And I, th I think there, we of course have seen probably if you've been exploring the internet at all like people like flat earth people have like their own little niche communities that they hang out in and i think to an even extent like libertarians fall into that um sometimes is that we kind of have like this these echo chambers that we go around in and it has the same effect as almost are like you conspiracy are you theories. saying that libertarianism is a conspiracy theory chris no i'm just i'm just saying that it has <laughs> it can have the same tr like no, tribalist effect as some of these conspiracy theories because it's so against the grain as no and i agree i think that's think. i think that's a really good point a lot of people i guess for lack of a better word collectivize into these groups that have the same beliefs as them and it gives them a sense of community and it kind of bolsters their belief in this because it's the thing holding their their social standing together right 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 and it also makes people feel special to, to think that you have inside knowledge on inner government workings or you know that the government is lying about something or you know depending on the theory whether it's government or a corporation or whoever orchestrated the event you know that that person is lying it makes you feel like you have something to offer the world well i think part of it is that everyone kind of everyone wants their also their bit of fame too you know everyone wants their 15 minutes the idea that okay if i dig deep enough into something and i can uncover this horrible secret or this fascinating secret whatever the case and i can present it to the world and i can be the person who discovers this because if you think about it there's lots of things that have already been kind of discovered you know like other planets you know like the law of gravity and we've kind of already discovered most of what we know in the world so these secrets i think are what people are trying to uncover these are the new things that people are trying to pioneer because they can't explore space because we're not ready to do that yet you know other than going into the moon and whatnot we're born too early to explore space we're born too late to explore the world so what do we have to explore secrets information those kind of things. I, I think right. that's We're like a right lot on of the what cusp people... of a renaissance. The anti-intellectual renaissance. Sure. The last conspiracy episode, we covered 9-11 and cryptozoology in the Denver International Airport. This week, Lonnie's going to start us off with aliens. Okay. So basically, south of our border, there are... No, I'm joking. Not those kind of aliens. But... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we no, don't talk um, about borders. 
Yeah, um, I'm sorry. I'm Mexican. I can make You're the fired. joke. It's okay. No. <laughs> but no, um, literally like alien life, extraterrestrial life, the idea of we're not alone in the universe. So that has been a big question for, well, ever, really. Once people kind of started realizing that there was more than the Earth, you know, that there was places beyond it, not spiritually, but physically beyond the Earth, out in space, other planets, they started realizing that there was just more than what they were exposed to. They've been wondering, well, are there other people? Are there animals? What is going on? Are we alone in the universe? You know, this has always been a question forever. And a lot of times people, they claim to have seen visitors, whether on spacecrafts of sorts, you know, people claim mm-hmm. to have been even abducted, you know, taken on board these crafts of sorts. And this goes back uh, April 14th, 1561, 500 years ago, residents of Nuremberg described the appearance of a large black triangular object. According to witnesses, there were also hundreds of spheres, cylinders, and other odd-shaped objects that moved erratically overhead. So this isn't anything new at all, you know, as far as seeing... That's crazy. I didn't know it got that far. So, Lonnie, what you're Mm -hmm. saying is the Borg from Star Trek came to Germany in the 1500s and turned all of the Germans super efficient? I think so. I think that was what happened. Okay, now hear me out. Gosh. This might be an even crazier conspiracy. What if there are no aliens and no UFOs, but it's just people from the future using time travel to fuck with us? Oh, I I'm going to I'm going to hit up that point. That's that's going to be my conspiracy theory. Oh shit. It's, okay. It's it ties in. Lonnie, you can finish <laughs> yours, but <laughs> but listeners hold that thought for one moment. Get your Doctor Who glasses on cuz it's coming up. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, this one's going to get pretty good. Uh so people now are finding what you may want to call evidence. I'm not really sure if it's evidence or not or proof of aliens visiting thousands of years ago. Oh, it was aliens, the the mean the uh what's his name? The guy the, from Ancient Aliens with the crazy hair. Right, yeah. So people have presented recently what they believe to be proof or evidence of aliens visiting even thousands of years ago and possibly helping us out with various technological advances or building things that maybe we weren't quite capable of building ourselves, such as pyramids. The pyramids. Right, exactly. The pyramids. Not just the pyramids in Egypt. Right. The Great Wall of China. Tons of things. And not just pyramids in Egypt, but also the pyramids that are in Central America. These right. Various... I was about to say, there's another huge alien conspiracy with the Mayans. Right. With the Mayans, the exactly. Pyramid. The largest pyramid in the world is actually in Central America. You see things like in hieroglyphics where there's these scenes and there's a what looks kind of like something floating in the air and people on this thing and they look a little strange you know uh, people look at the the hieroglyphics um in Egypt and and they look at the shapes of the skulls of the pharaohs and things like that and they're a little odd you know, so that's why the, these these kind of things uh, come about. Is that why are why is all this ancient stuff so strange? And this is all we have to go on. There's no there's the no ancient books, stuff is always you know. really interesting to me because it was so long ago that a lot of stuff didn't survive from there. You don't have the written records in English. You have to somehow translate all of this stuff. You have everything that's you know decomposed over thousands of years. Right. And, and yeah, there's no telling was what lost. things actually were like. Imagine in 2,000 years or 5,000 years, somebody finds your house under 100 feet of rock. There was actually a book written about that exact subject. Um, I don't remember the actual name of it, but basically this hotel room is found – or this hotel is found like thousands of years in the future, and there there's archaeologists excavating it. And they concluded that the TV was like an idol. 
that it was like right, right. because it was always in the center of the room and that like some people died like with the remote in their hand and that the bathroom was the most was like the holiest part of the house and their and their religion because it was always the cleanest you know right. stuff like that you know and like it, it's it goes off of like what you know people valued what people valued was attributed to you know their existence and the book is called Motel of the Mysteries, and it's by David McCauley. If in okay, case that sounds really want to interesting, read it. and I'm probably going to go buy it. Yeah, I mean, think of what was lost in the fire of the Library of Alexandria. Oh, God. Right. There could have been tons of evidence of something like this happening or evidence to the contrary. Right. But it's we don't just, know, you know we're because it's lost. We're relying on you know, thousands and thousands of years old evidence, quote unquote, and we're only looking at a very small fraction of what was actually reality back then. And we're relying on interpretation of archaeologists nowadays. And also coming back to somewhat modern day, you know, people have seen spacecrafts or strange shapes in the sky for a while. Even before Roswell, you're talking like in World War II pilots seeing things and you know they kind of thought like, okay they're probably hallucinating from oxygen deprivation or and ptsd something like right yeah so you know there's kind of like okay yeah that, that that's probably all it was but that's why people start fantasizing about these kind of things because people are like oh yeah they, they were just hallucinating that's what things have always have been you know i think it's also the power time. of suggestion you hear about UFOs and you file it away in the back of your mind. Oh, yeah, this this lady saw a blinking light and said it was a spaceship on her yard. She's probably crazy. But then you have one of these episodes and you see something weird. And that is the first thing that pops in your head. So you kind of change your whole perception around that. Right, right, exactly. Like, like for example, you know, I can remember whenever I was younger seeing a a light moving across the sky kind of fast but not like fast enough to be like a meteor but it wasn't blinking or anything like that but also at the same time i was looking into alien kind of stuff bigfoot you know i was i've always been interested in these kind of things so it's that suggestion that while i did probably just see a plane that was moving very fast or maybe like a satellite or space station something like that in my state i thought it could have been an alien i kind of hope it was but it probably wasn't i i can see like what you mean with that that power of suggestion you know you kind of like when people you know they they're very very religious so they kind of start feeling presences of angels or evil or or whatever the case may be it, there's that like you said, that power of suggestion. So what do you so, think about aliens? Do you think they're real? Well, I mean, as large as the universe is, it would be kind of idiotic to think that we're the only planet that holds some sort of life. Now, are there other forms of intelligent life that have visited Earth? That I I don't know. Some people, this actually goes into another theory, some people think that the reason why none of it has attempted to make any sort of contact or possible explanations for abductions is that we're a zoo. <laughs> that's that's kind of like the the Stephen Hawking theory about like if aliens visited Earth. Basically it boils down to like, okay, if you've gotten to the point where aliens, you know, let's just assume aliens do exist. Let's assume that they're far more advanced than we are. Let's assume that they have taken an interest in the earth for some reason or another. So they're planning to travel there or have, have traveled here. Basically, they would be traveling for two reasons. One, they would be your zoo theory, Lonnie, about that were interesting for scientific study or they're trying to see their history by observing a culture that a culture and a history that's older than theirs. And so they're just watching and studying us like the Vulcans from Star Trek. Basically, the, if you're not familiar with Star Trek, the Vulcans actually fight on Earth for, I think, like a century before they got and they concluded that when the Earth got to the point of interplanetary travel, that they would contact the earthlings contact humans and establish trade with them. And so that's kind of what the first theory, 
The second theory is that they are coming for to just harvest the planet. They're so far advanced that they're just moving around from system to system. They're killing all the people or whatever life's on it because they don't fucking care. And because they're lower like forms world of life. World. Like in like Vikings. Today. Yeah, like they're, they're, they're literally like space Vikings or like Independence Day would probably be a be a good example of that. They're far more advanced than we are, and they see us as like we would view ants or chickens. They would just kill us just because they want to harvest the minerals and the water and things like that out of the out of the earth. So <laughs> if Earth has been visited by aliens, it's probably in the first group that they're just kind of watching us and they've slipped up a couple times. And maybe people have seen them, but the most likely scenario is that aliens do exist, but they're not nearly to the point of being able to travel immense distances over space to be able to visit us just because they're interested in us. It's, yeah, I like, think we don't. Well, I, I don't know. Think we I don't think... really have that much to offer. <laughs> right, and I think that kind of goes into my take on it as well we're not important enough. Like it's kind of that self aggrandizing thing that humans do. Okay. So we're born in this time period. Why in the hell do you think that we're so special that we're going to be the time period visited by aliens in the vast time period of the universe? We're just like a blink of an eye. Not even that long. If there are aliens, which I do believe there are, I do believe that there are other life forms in the universe. I think it's pretty egotistical of us to think that we're the only things out there. Of course, there's life on other planets. We haven't discovered it yet, but think of our resources. We don't, we can't travel to other planets besides the ones directly next to us. We're not going to know that there's not bacteria on another planet or bugs on another planet or any other kind of life form. And we're not going to know that there's intelligent life out there or what that intelligent life looks like. I think a lot of people yeah, assume I mean... that in the intelligent life will look like humans or kind of like the little green men, but. I don't think oh. they're going to resemble anything like that at all. There's also the theory that aliens have already been here many, many moons ago and that we are their experiment. That yeah. Is or that's that interesting. the Maybe. aliens are the – you know how people uh, – I, I don't even know why there's still this missing link kind of theory, but – Anyways, I think evolution is established enough to, to where there is no missing no missing link. But the idea that aliens are the missing link that mm, we were just kind of or we that's kind of like that's kind of like 2001 A Space Odyssey. Like, you know, who's to the, say d aliens even have DNA? You know I mean, what I mean? Like they could be uh, completely made up differently than us. They might not be carbon based. That's kind of the assumption that everybody know. runs on is that they have to be carbon based and they have to live in the Goldilocks zone for their planet. I don't believe that. I think that life can adapt. Whatever form of life that is might be able to adapt to other climates or to other. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily I don't think it's necessarily that the pre-human and the alien mated, but that the alien had something to do with the advancement of the right. pre-human into human. Right. Whether so if you've seen if you've seen 2000 I don't, know, knowledge, man, I don't buy it. Yeah, if you've seen like 2001 yeah. a Space Odyssey, that's basically how it starts out is that there's all these monkeys or uh, you know apes and they're they see this monolith and the monolith is supposed to in the story is supposed to be like the beginning of civilization or knowledge. And then you see the apes start making tools and then the apes start like killing each other with them. So that's mm -hmm. kind of a aspect of it. But yeah, I don't think I don't think uh, we may figure this out in our lifetime, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I think we're just going to keep think debating about it. I don't think we're going to figure it out anytime soon. But I think <laughs> aliens could come tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they could. They could come tomorrow. And she'd be like, ha -ha, uh, I, I really hope they don't that. because someone's going to shoot at them and then we're going to start an intergalactic war and we're, we're just not ready for that. I mean, yeah, look, they're going to they're going to blink barely, their eyes and our planet will be decimated. You never yeah, know. We we barely beat Thanos. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, uh, Chris, you wanted to talk about the Mandela effect. Why don't you start us off with that? 
All right, so I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite conspiracy theories of all time, the Mandela Effect. So, basically, the Mandela Effect is a phenomenon where a large number of people have false memory about an event or a fact. And it originally came about from Nelson Mandela, because Nelson Mandela, as some of you should know, he died in 2013. And was this was the initial event to spark this conspiracy theory because multiple people cited that they remembered him dying while he was in prison in the 1980s, which is not true. And people even claim that they recalled news clips and TV coverage of him um, of his funeral, but it never happened. He died in 2013. And people remember his funeral, but they also remember him being president of South Africa. So how can you remember both things at the same time? So it gets more extensive than just Nelson Mandela. There's things like the Berenstein Bears. Some people remember it actually being spelled differently, the Berenstein Bears. And there's even people who have procured like VHS tapes of some of the original Berenstein Bears like little short movies and stuff that it's spelled Baron Stein bears. And there's some people that swear that they had these books when they were a kid, but it never actually happened. It's always been Baron scene bears. And so there's other things like Morpheus from the matrix. A lot of people remember the quote, what if I told you everything you know is a lie, but he never actually says that in the movie, but people swear up and down that he does. Wait a minute. Another. Yeah. He said that in the movie though. He doesn't say that. No, bullshit. He doesn't say it. He never <laughs> actually says it in the Matrix. But I remember it. But you don't. You don't you're, like you're it, bullshit, you, sir. No, I'm not. I'm totally not. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go rewatch it, it now because that's <laughs> what the fuck. If I can't trust but, that, what can I trust? So there's like a whole, there's a whole bunch of these. There's even one if you if you go on YouTube and you just type in the Mandela effect. There's so many of people compl- like saying that I remember this thing happening. I remember the one of them is even this guy who lived in Southern California who drove on his commute every day on this particular road, and he was looking up and where he used to live and was reminiscing about it on Google Earth, and he sees this hotel that's there on this road that he used to drive on. But he drove on that road every day for two years for work, and that hotel was never there. And then so he ends up actually calling the hotel and asking them when they built their hotel, and they had been there for seven years. He never remembers it happening. He called people who used to live next to him and work at the same place that he did and all this other kind of stuff. He had this misremembering of it. Another one is there's a whole bunch of them. The Monopoly man actually doesn't have a monocle. Wait, but he people does remember or he doesn't? Him. He doesn't have a monocle, but a lot of people remember <sighs> him having damage. one. What about Mr. Peanut? Does he have a monocle? Mr. Peanut does have a monocle. Okay. Oh, okay. At least All that right, one's cool. safe. Okay, so getting back to the Berenstein Bears. Yes. Okay, so I've seen the images of people with the VHS tapes. Mm-hmm. I think there's a very simple explanation for this. A lot of that shit is made in China. Yes. They misspell things. Yes. So there's probably a bunch of shipments of VHSs and toys and books that have the the misspelling of it because it's actually Baron Stain Bears instead of Baron Stein Bears. Yeah. And And I think the, the assumption was that it was misspelled on the work order or whatever, so they corrected it. I think that's pretty easily explained. That's pretty easily explained, but the thing is, what the conspiracy Shazam? theory. That, that I'm going to get to that one. The conspiracy oh, okay. theory okay. behind the Baron Stein Bears is insane. So, oh boy, they, so there's people that that's a logical explanation that you just cited. But there are people that say, well, the Baron Stein Bears sounds too Jewish. So there were people, certain there people. There it that is. Didn't, well, yeah. <laughs> you have to think there when is. this stuff came out. So the Berenstein Bears started I think in... Every episode, I think every episode we do, we have to somehow 
find the Jews somewhere. <laughs> in it. So yeah. the claim is that there are certain people that thought that they were yeah, – the, the thought is either that they're – that people would think they're making fun of Jewish people or it's the other way, that it's Jewish and that's bad and so we don't want that on our, on our brand. So we're going to change the name. Also, another one is it's an interview with – quote – Interview with the vampire, not interview with a vampire. What? That, that's the – people get the title wrong. and or, or they'll say interview with a vampire instead of interview with the vampire. Okay, so, I hadn't heard that one before. Yeah, so – and I know like everybody says interview with a vampire. So I, I had a – That uh, one might have just been like a talking yeah. too fast kind of – like the game of telephone kind of thing. Right. So the Shazam one. Okay. Oh, God. The Shazam one is almost exclusive to millennials. So a lot of people from the millennial generation remember, like distinctly recall seeing on TV or seeing a in Blockbuster, you know, a movie that was called Shazam with Sinbad, the actor, playing a genie. I am one of those people. <laughs> and the thing is, when you hear it, and I think – Back when Lonnie was saying about like the power of suggestion, I think that a lot of people, when you say that to somebody, they're like, oh, yeah, I totally remember that. And the thing is, when I heard it, I was like, yeah, that took, that happened. Yeah, that was a movie. It's not. It never was a movie. That like Sinbad himself has said that that never happened. I never well, played a genie a in a movie. He's obviously yeah, an but, agent but, of the deep state. But the thing is, <laughs> Caitlin, you're one of those – one of the people who swears – Okay, so that's a couple ex- a couple examples. I can of this. see why that would be the power of persuasion, though, because that's like one of the most widely yep. used examples of the Mandela effect, and we've seen the memes. It's been everywhere forever. Like I can see why that would be kind of implanted in our brain as something that may have happened. And it goes. I, I had a I had a book that it has a whole bunch of like hoaxes and just things like that. And it, it talks about this, but it wasn't called the Mandela effect at the time. I actually don't know what they called it in the book. I have to find the book, to, uh, pull it up again, but they talked about people misremembering things like, uh, you know, it, obviously this book was written in like either late sixties or early seventies or something. So it's a little dated it talked about like the actor, James Cagney. And whenever people would do like an impression of him, they'd say like you dirty rat. He never says you dirty rat in any movie. They had several examples, but they're all like older examples. Apparently this is always going on. <laughs> so another one is, you know, the expression, if you build it, they will come. Yes. Do you know where that's from? Yeah. A field of dreams, that's right? Feel the dreams. Yeah. Well, actually, it's not. Yes, it is. The quote, no. The quote, no, it's not. Because the quote is, if you Don't build you it, he will come. He will come. It's. Quit dismantling know. my childhood. <laughs> I know, right? It's it, and the and here's the here's the thing where the conspiracy theory gets really ridiculous. Those are some examples, but I mentioned Doctor Who earlier, and time travel is involved in this conspiracy theory. So, people who have subscribed to this theory claim that it is logical to assume that if humanity continues the way it is, that people will eventually, in the future, develop time travel. And there will eventually be people in this future who are some government agency or something that is tasked with repairing the timeline in certain ways. So to create certain results in the future in very like minor ways, just tweaking. But there is some fallback to where a hotel now appears on a road that it wasn't before. And everybody who has this remembering of a certain thing exists in a kind of parallel remembrance or parallel timeline to ours and so i'm gonna tweak that theory a little bit and say it's probably not a government agency it's probably like the future's version of 4chan and shit posters who just go back and be that too it could it could be that as well (laughs) like Like, this is the future's version of memes is going back in the past (laughs) and screwing with people's childhood memories yeah everybody's seen the pictures of like keanu reeves in the 1800s yeah dude yeah there's like that Civil War weird. soldier that looks like him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's so, quite a few, uh, actually. Cage, he goes back too. to the 1500s. Yeah. Nicholas Cage is, as, as well. He, uh, so that's the, that's the real 
big brained conspiracy theory about the Mandela effect is that these people who remember stuff different are actually in like a, a separate timeline of remembrance within our mm. own universe. It's pretty weird. I don't know. I but, think it's I think it's pretty far fetched. It's probably just glitches in the human brain. Um, I don't think you, power yeah. suggestion, but it is yeah. really interesting. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think, Lonnie? I mean, as a victim of this myself, <laughs> because I swear I saw Shazam on the shelf. I never rented it, but I swear I saw it on the shelf. Yeah. And, you know, like other various things like the the misheard quotes. It could be people mishearing things. I mean, because people mess up quotes all the time. I, mean, I don't know. The Field of but... Dreams thing is pissing me off because I've seen that movie 450,000 times. And I am almost 100% certain that it says, if you build it, they will come. It doesn't. I had to rewatch the clip to figure it out, to actually discover it, because I've watched that movie when I was a kid. Um, I'm from Iowa. So, of course, like, <laughs> Field, Field of Dreams is like our business. And, and no, that's... It says if you build it, he will come. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean. <sighs> the Nelson Mandela it, it, effect one, though, is is really interesting, though, because if he had died in prison, it wouldn't have made the news. There wouldn't have been this massively shared funeral that everyone cared about because he would have just been some guy in prison in South Africa. Like he wasn't he wasn't famous. Right. And I think he would because he was in prison for a while. And I mean, it is possible for like if a news report came on TV and they were talking about Nelson, Nelson Mandela, then for in the longest time period, you might have been like, well, he pro oh, they're they're playing some tribute to him. He probably died or something. Yeah, uh, the, you know? the, weir the weird thing is why so many people have these memories that aren't real. I think it might go and back to so many you know, people conspiracy share theories these as a whole. memories. I think it might just go back to the whole conspiracy theories as a whole, feeling a part of something greater than yourself. Yes, being part of that group of people who. I mean, I wouldn't call I wouldn't call seeing Shazam on a movie rental place being a part of something greater than myself. Well, no, because that actually happened. No, it um, didn't. And Sinbad is obviously a time traveler who's trying to screw with me by saying it didn't. So that's the exception to the rule have you, here. Have you have you seen House Guest? I don't know if he's talented enough to pull that off. That's true. It was a terrible movie. It was. I've seen it like twenty times. I don't know Me why. Too. My mom had it taped on a VHS, and it was yeah. like one of the only movies we had. So I watched it all the time. I've never seen it, and something tells oh, it's me worth, it's, it's good. It's worth a watch. Yeah, is it, is you it? should definitely <laughs> go to your local blockbuster and pick that up. Yeah, go find is, a blockbuster. It'll be there. Is uh, is it as good in quotes as the room? I never saw that. Um, so I don't know. Never saw it, but no, I don't think so. Not quite. Hi, like that. Mark. Yeah, probably that's like. A, I hear it's terrible, but yeah, I, I never saw that. It's really bad. Like it, it's so bad that you're like, how somebody had to intentionally make this just horrible. Yeah, anyway, so that's the Mandela effect, guys. And and if you're a subscriber to this theory, um, let me know when you see a Doctor Who running around or a you know time traveling G man because I and take a picture of him. And if it doesn't, it make sure you do it with a film camera because if he doesn't show up on film, then that means he's from the future because the optical transference won't go onto the film because he's in a different time dimension. Wow! How much weed did you smoke before this podcast? Oh, I don't. I, I I'm completely sober right now. I haven't had a drink in like 72 hours. I haven't smoked weed in a very long time. <laughs> so yeah, I'm completely sober. But that is an actual thing. I think. I think these. I think that's kind of like the the best thing. Well, like whenever someone's talking about this crazy stuff and they're completely sober, and it's like, wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like, it just makes it that much more believable whenever someone's like, no, seriously, I don't do drugs. I don't do them. <laughs> Crack is whack. You know. My drug's life, man. I just live it, and it oh, gets God. me high. <laughs> so <laughs> moving on. <laughs> unironically say that, you're just like, wow. That guy speaking is of, the happiest man. Speaking of cringy people, we're going to get into my conspiracy theory this week, and that would be chemtrails i think it's one of the 
the most insane things I've ever heard. So chemtrails, or as the conspiracy theorists call it, covert geoengineering, (laughs) which is hilarious, is a theory about how the government is spraying chemicals through commercial aircraft and that is the trails you see after after planes and they are creating clouds to block the sunlight (laughs) by spraying and i quote aluminum barium and strontium i don't know what strontium is but i think it's an element so they think that aluminum barium and strontium are being sprayed out of commercial aircrafts into these cloud-like lines that you see after planes. Everyone sees them all the time. So the official explanation for chemtrails is that they are harmless condensation trails, or contrails, formed when moist engine exhaust hits freezing temperatures at high altitudes. So this would be similar to whenever you're outside in the cold and you can see your breath. That's essentially what these contrails are, or chemtrails, as the theorists like to call them, But they don't buy that. They believe that it is a government conspiracy to create cloud cover to slow down global warming. Also, there is some of them that believe that they are also spraying chemicals to make us sick and obedient. There are others that believe it is chemicals that contain some kind of mind control element to them. I I don't know what that could possibly be, but... No, Caitlin. Let me let me tell you what it is right here. Okay, right. go for it. Okay, the airlines are putting chemicals in the air and making the freaking birds gay. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! If birds actually existed, that would be. That's true. Birds aren't real, and yep. we will get yeah, to that on episode. Three. When's the last time you've seen a bird? Really? Do you even know anyone <laughs> that's seen a bird? No, we've seen birds. I wish this was video so you could see air quotes, but air quote birds. But they're really (laughs) government drones, man. Anyone who says they've seen a real bird is lying. So I was reading this thing earlier today about particular avian varieties. And it had letters that formed things on this paper about these avian things. And I was reading it. And then I suddenly noticed that the bird is, in fact, the word. Get out. Get out of this podcast right now. (laughs) I hate hate you so much right now, Chris. You're fired. You're never welcome back, you son of a bitch. I had a feeling that's where it was going. I was like, no, no, he wouldn't. No. Anyway. So back to chemtrails, since Chris is an asshole. (laughs) Covert geoengineering, or chemtrails are used to mitigate global warming. They spray chemicals into the atmosphere to form sun-blocking artificial cloud cover. This is done in secret because the chemicals wreak havoc on environmental and human health, causing Alzheimer's, all sorts of brain problems, and cancer, says one follower. So one thing that fueled a lot of chemtrail followers in recent years is there was a fake tweet from Trump, and it went all over the place in fake news news cycles and fake news websites that a lot of these conspiracy theorists who also, you know, they call themselves the truthers. They usually believe in the 9-11 conspiracies, flat earth, anti-vax, and chemtrails. It's kind of a package deal, if you will, for a lot of conspiracy theorists. Um, but a lot of these websites posted posted a fake tweet from Trump that said, and I quote, My very first executive order will end the chemtrailing across America, MAGA. And they all believed this as a real tweet. I mean, that could be a real tweet, though. Yeah, no, and I kind of have to give them some credit there. Like, I thought it was a real tweet when I first saw it. I'm not going to lie. I was like, oh, yeah, it's probably probably what Trump said. You know, he also called uh, Kim Jong-un, what was he, Rocket Man? And that was a real (laughs) thing. Greatest. That was the greatest um, <laughs> scene in political theater I've ever seen. It, it was so good. <laughs> I was like, that you was, can't drop your jaw anymore. And it just, he keeps going. That so was I a didn't Michael, really think twice about this tweet. That was a Michael Jackson popcorn moment right there. I was like, oh, this is <laughs> right. going to be good. 
The only thing that made me question it is right after he tweeted, and this is a screenshot of the same tweet, he says, I will end autism in America by banning all vaccinations on my very first day in office. And that's when I was like, okay, maybe this isn't real. Maybe these are fake <laughs> tweets <laughs> because I, I'm pretty sure that that would be I don't a tweet know. that haunted is him that- forever. I don't know, because that also could be a real tweet, too. Oh, he does have, he does believe in the whole autism theory. He has tweeted about that before, but banning vaccinations on his first day, that's where I, Wait, I didn't believe it. Baron Trump, he has autism? Or does he have, some, have some other... No, Baron I Trump think a lot a of people traveler, were I think. speculating that he did, because he was really fidgety on, um, inaug- I, I, not inauguration, but on election night. I'm pretty sure, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that he that it's admitted that he does have some sort of demel- developmental disability, but I don't know. It'd be interesting to to know if he was vaccinated or not. Just saying. Well, vaccines don't cause autism, so just saying. I mean, they could though. They, they don't. Could, though. I'm just saying. It's, a, they it's could. a genetic disorder. You don't get genetic disorders from vaccines. <laughs> okay. I mean, he is a time traveler, so I'm totally know, kidding. Could. I don't believe in that. No, I know. <laughs> vaccines prevent you from dying. By the way, they do. Now, a lot of people quote. Other things the government has done to back up their theory about chemtrails. One lady says, to me, chemtrails aren't that far-fetched, she says. To put her beliefs into context, she cites known examples of the military conducting secret human experiments, such as the time in the 1950 when the army sprayed bacteria into San Francisco's fog in a simulated germ warfare attack, leaving one man dead. So a lot of these people are citing other events to back up their theory when in reality that doesn't back up their theory at all all it does is back up their credibility i guess or back up the credibility of the theory but it doesn't address the theory itself so as far as evidence of chemtrails some people have collected soil samples and water samples from area they believe they're affected by chemtrails and have found elevated aluminum stromium and barium yeah, they have found you know elevated levels of those three, and they just take that as proof. Now, it kind of completely ignores other environmental factors, why they would have elevated levels of that stuff, but they, they've done a lot of peer-reviewed studies, and chemtrails are just kind of, I mean, there's no scientific evidence backing it up whatsoever. Now, yeah, here's I the mean, kicker. Whether or not planes are spraying things, there's still contrails. So... Yes, there is still contrails, and that's essentially just water vapor. Yeah, right. you can you can do Planes this at home. Planes are vaping at us. Yeah, you can do this at <laughs> home by putting water in your tea kettle and then uh, turning We're the heat on. We're walking outside in winter and breathing. It's, yeah, I was. Um, if y'all don't know, I do car detailing, uh, and one of my customers he came out uh, and was just checking on the progress and stuff like that, and we were just kind of chit chatting a little bit, and he sees a plane flying overhead, and he's like, "Hey, let me ask you something." He's like, "You see that plane?" Uh, look up. I'm like, yeah. He's like, uh, you see like the uh, cloud kind of trail behind it? I was like, yeah. He's like, <laughs> what is that? And I'm just, in my mind, I'm like, Jesus, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm not getting into this conversation while I'm trying to clean this guy's car. I'm like, a contrail? He's like, thank you. He's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's thank like, goodness. <laughs> yeah, he's like, thank you. He's like, I can't believe there's so many people that believe this nonsense. He's like, I was talking with one of my, I think he said like his daughter's friends was over. And he's like, he's like, and she's some like weird leftist or something like that. And she said something about chemtrails. So apparently leftists <laughs> believe in chemtrails too. Oh but, yeah. Uh, chemtrails is one that spans the political spectrum. It's not right wing right. exclusively. Um, there's actually a surprising amount of leftist support for chemtrails because it kind of goes into the government is against progress on global you know warming get, or climate change. You know how to get rid of chemtrails? Ban airplanes. No, you spray vinegar. What? What's the joke? Is it a no, there is no joke. There's a video, and I thought it was funny because it's titled, Ron Paul supporter sprays vinegar at oh, sky no. to combat, oh, to combat Jesus Christ. chemtrails. <laughs> no. And there's like... Somebody. Isn't that where that meme comes from? Isn't that where that meme of like the guy spraying the spray bottle at the oh at the God, sky? It is. Yes, but there's there's a video. That's a great meme. This lady, she's like she's like there there they are. Like we gotta gotta we gotta protect ourselves and stuff like that. And you know she's like all right 
all right, Billy, like her son or whatever, this video in it. He's like, and like, they're both like, like he's videoing it on like a cell phone. They're both like spraying vinegar at the sky. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I'd like to, I'd like to get their spray bottle manufacturer because if it's, it's reaching the clouds. Shit. Yeah. I need that spray bottle too. <laughs> right? That would be nice. I, I got a, I got a business to run. I need that spray <laughs> Can you bottle. imagine the water pressure on that thing? Yeah. I wouldn't even need a hose or anything. <laughs> So, stoking the chemtrails theory is the fact that there are a few legitimate reasons for atmospheric spraying. Geoengineering scientists have suggested fighting global warming by doing more or less what chemtrail subscribers believe. So far, a lot of solar geoengineering, like, you know, spraying the atmosphere, creating cloud cover, the things that the chemtrail believers think that's already happening, it remains hypothetical. It's very small scale research stages, so it's not commercial aircrafts doing this. It's very small controlled environments, and most of the technology isn't invented yet. It does lend some credence to the theory that chemtrails might not always be a conspiracy theory, that in the future, this will be an actual thing that will be happening. Maybe not the aluminum, barium, and stromium, but other chemicals to, I guess, stop the spread of global warming or climate change. Uh, Worryingly, geoengineering may emerge as this administration's preferred approach to global warming. Sylvia Ribeiro says, in their view, building a big, beautiful wall of sulfate in the sky could be a perfect excuse to allow uncontrolled fossil fuel extraction. This is a scientist with the ETC group, which is a very far left group that does believe in chemtrails. They say that chemtrails will be used by the Trump administration to protect fossil fuel interests. So basically, the oil industry is responsible for government chemtrails. So I don't know. What do you guys think? Hmm. That's a lot to unpack there. And, yeah, um, right. <laughs> Like it, one side of it says it's like, hey, it's to it's to stop global warming. The other one says it's causing it. The other one says it's putting the chemicals in our bodies. Well, that's I, I, like, kind of how all conspiracy theories end up in the end, right? Like it's this they just fracture war. off into yeah. right. They they all fracture off into their own little groups, and it becomes this warring faction thing. Like, I mean, you brought it up in the beginning, much like libertarianism. Yeah, I was just gonna say, are you saying that libertarianism is a conspiracy theory? <laughs> Maybe. Are you Maybe claiming that there's going to be faction wars? <laughs> anyway, oh, shit. Kyle Wagner. Yeah. Oh, oh Kyle Wagner. <laughs> anyway, no, Kyle's Kyle's a good guy. He just has some interesting things to say about that regard. Yes. Anyway, so. We love, um, we but what do I think about it? Um, I think it kind of stems from just the general sense of like, you know what? Hey, maybe we're like, maybe there's, we're actually like traveling and. Like we've gotten too advanced. I feel like a lot of these um, conspiracy theories kind of they it's a desire to harken back to simpler times almost of like, hey, maybe we're traveling too much in planes or why are there so many? Why is there so much of a desire to travel by air all of a sudden? You know, there's got to be some some kind of reason for that. Uh, Um, Yeah, to visit far away places. Well, yeah. But the thing (laughs) is, you're not you have to (laughs) you have to think from you know, their perspective of somebody who probably doesn't travel by air very much or Wait, are someone you who's saying seen the... conspiracy theories are the result of boomers. I didn't say that. Oh, but you did. I did say that. But <laughs> it's definitely I'm it definitely the uh the chemtrails thing, I don't know. It seems to be kind of popular with older people. Yes. I don't know. That's just that's just my perspective I actually follow a couple people on Facebook who constantly post about chemtrails. Honestly, just for the laughs, because the things they post are just absolutely insane. Like, they'll just post a picture of clouds and be like, look up. You got to look up at the sky. There's chemtrails. I'm like, that's that's just like a regular cumulonimbus cloud. I, I didn't come out of a plane, bro. <laughs> it's so funny, though. But yeah, they are they are usually in the older crowd. <laughs> what the, the thing that, that kind of makes boomers. me... The thing that really makes me shake my head, like, or scratch my head about this is that, like, okay, they're trying to say that these planes flying around and leaving these trails are, it's bad for the environment or it's bad for people. It's like, because of, you know, these, and then they develop this theory that, like, they're spraying 
these weird substances in the air or that it's like a form of biological warfare or something like that. When you could just say, and this would be scientifically viable to say that like, hey, um, airplanes burn a lot of fossil fuels. Airplanes make a lot of pollution. I wonder if that's bad. And that's perfectly viable, but you don't go that – or these people don't go that route. They go to – the government's got to be doing something to, like, spray us with cancer. Well, I mean – It's ridiculous. The government's pretty fucked up. <laughs> I, I understand Think that. And I'm, not de- I'm not denying that. How many people have died because of government? Like, it's not too far-fetched to say that the government's spraying cancer chemicals on us. I think it's batshit crazy, but – like it's not I'm not saying I'm not say. saying that that, al- well, that that alone is not possible at all. Right. I, okay. I, I'm, well, I'm well, saying well, that in well, contrast to the actual the actual truth of right, that, right. Well, you know, pollution is bad. Okay. People Here, don't here's understand the problem science and they don't care. With, here's the problem with the idea of the government poisoning us to kill us through these kind of things is that it is not in their best interest to do so since we supply them. With, well, I say we supply them. They take taxes from us. So well, why would they want less people to get money from? The risk out. The risk doesn't outweigh the benefit. The, right. the like thing it, is, they have poisoned swaths of people before. Um, there is, God, I don't even remember what the thing was now, but there was something about Detroit and St. Louis where they were spraying something as a test in very. Uh, urban communities, um, a lot of African-American populations. And it wasn't found out about until like 30 years later and people were coming down with cancer at like alarmingly high rates in these Well, areas. I mean, gosh, Agent Orange. Well, that, yeah. <laughs> I, and, yeah, uh, Agent Tuskegee. Orange. The, yep. The, yeah, the Tuskegee, Tuskegee experiments. Yeah. Um, yeah, Agent Orange, like – they, the people who were testing it in Canada before it was used in Vietnam as a defoliating agent, they um, they were actually, like, spraying it on each other. These mm. people had them in, like, spray bottles that you use for, like, bug spray, and they were spraying the it, Agent Orange on each other because it evaporated and it felt cool and it was really, it was really hot out. Oh, dear and God. Because <laughs> they straight up told them that there's no risk to human beings, and then they dumped it by the truckload on top of you know, U S soldiers and Marines that, and then they found out, they quote found out later that this straight up gives you cancer. Like you will get cancer from this stuff. And so, I mean, I can see the whole somewhat logical progression into thinking that maybe airplanes are spraying agent orange, like substances on people, but it's like how Lonnie said that it's like, well, I mean, what's the, what's the benefit in that? Is is an unknown, and then that's where you, you have, have to your, you have your to think if they're stops. running scientific tests, which a lot of chemtrail believers think that they're running tests on human populations. You'd think that they would use a much more controlled environment to run tests, not vast yes. swaths of countryside from commercial aircrafts thirty thousand feet in the air. Right. You're not well, going to have a controlled like, environment, and you're not like going through it. It testing people. For like the pump effects. it in like so the air conditioners kind of, at like Walmart or something. You right, know, but not what kind water. of scientific experiment doesn't test the recipients of the variable? Or have so, a con- yeah, like have a control a control group. You yeah, know, no control not, group, you know. no follow through, no confined area for the testing. Like the whole testing things on population doesn't really make sense in this instance because it it doesn't follow scientific method whatsoever. And I think that's a lot of things conspiracy theorists miss is scientific method. Yes, science can be used in horrible ways, but you still have to follow that. that On the other hand, with as stupid and inefficient as the government is, they may just not follow scientific method. But here's the thing: you're, if you're talking about like you're spent, it's got if the chemtrail thing is actually real, and they're actually spending all this like swaths of money to do it in man hours and things like that, then I mean they have to justify that somehow, and they have to justify it to like legislative committees that give them money. So I mean, if no, you didn't no, follow the science, no, it's a deep state. It doesn't go through Congress. Oh, that's right. God, I forgot. You know that. Sorry. Come on. It's it's the deep state. Sorry, it's lizard people. My mistake. Oh, we should do that on an episode. The lizard people. That's a fun oh, one. Man. Someone else take that one. I don't want to take any more of the uh, 
I've already done Bigfoot and now aliens, <laughs> and people are just going to think I'm absolutely crazy. You know, so you I want to do aliens. Bigfoot did aliens? someone did Ooh, someone do MK Ultra already? No, uh, no. Matt I was want do to that. do. I want to do that if we if we want if I'm on the next episode, I'll do MK Ultra. Perfect. Yeah, that's a that's a good one because yeah. there's portions of that that are it, it's it's pretty damning in some ways, but I don't know. Well, isn't so, that not really a conspiracy? Isn't that like real? There's so there's parts of it that are verified. There's parts of the entire theory that are verified to be real, but the thing the thing is, like, of course, people take a little bit of truth and they run with it, right? So there's all these little tiny bits and pieces of of actual verified information about there being a CIA or an FBI experimentation on people. And people kind of can join all of these little bits of information into one thing or that it's ah. a true, they attribute it to, to a thing that it might not be. And that's kind of ah. where like the conspiracy theory side of it comes. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a different one because unlike aliens or, you know, the Mandela effect, you're, you're taking, instead of like taking a uh a far out theory and trying to apply it to real life like aliens uh, you know alien life forms and stuff like that mm -hmm. you're taking real life and you're building a you're building like a, a overarching theory about real life about what you know verifiable things in real life it's kind of it's kind of funny that's my favorite conspiracy theory is mk ultra yeah but. yeah we'll uh we'll have to talk about that next time yeah, I want to sure. keep these conspiracy theory episodes going because they're a lot of fun. Oh, absolutely. I'm down for some more. That's for sure. Awesome. It would be great to have you back on. I want to thank all of our listeners for tuning in this week. And before we go, we just want to remind everyone to check out Think Liberty on all social media platforms. Just search for Think Liberty on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and any other platforms you use. And as always, our website is think-liberty.com. And before you're done, subscribe to the Think Liberty Podcast Network for almost daily uploads of new shows, leave us a review, and tell a friend. I appreciate everyone's time this week, and whether you like it or not, we'll probably be back. <laughs>